In this week's abbreviated holiday video, we'll review the latest charts and historical data to help us answer the question, will the stock market bulls get a wake-up call in 2022? You may remember in last week's video, we compared the COVID scares in 2020 and 2021, and in the 2021 case, we walked forward from November 24th, the day before Thanksgiving, and in the 2020 case, we walked forward from February 19th. And as you may recall, as we did that walking out to calendar day 29, we saw there were some significant differences relative to the market's concern about the virus. On the right side of your screen, this was a look of the S&P 500 calendar day 29, which was December 23rd around 2 p.m., flirting with a new all-time high. If we walk forward to this week, we can see that on December 30th, intraday, we still have that full bore bullish look with price above all of the moving averages, blue the fastest moving averages on top, silver the slowest moving averages on the bottom, and the slopes of all of the moving averages are up. So heading into year end, the chart in front of us from a shorter term perspective still looks healthy. And we know from past videos that we've got a demographic tailwind that should last for several more years. Given the markets have done well in 2021, it might be helpful to revisit our strategy from a longer term perspective. Let's zero in on this period here, around 1995 where my cursor is, all the way to this peak here in the spring of 2000. For the most part on this time frame, all of the volatility in this area here would be classified as volatility to ignore. And then when you get up to the spring of 2000, eventually you morph into volatility to respect. So your goal in this period here is to capture somewhat near market returns. You'd like to beat the market every year, but that's not necessarily that important. You wanna make sure if the market is doing well and making money that you're making money. And under our approach, and based on our time frame, yours may vary, we want to try to limit the damage when we get into cases like this. After a year like 2021, it can be easy to forget or become complacent. And in terms of forgetting, forgetting that the S&P 500 lost over 50% in this period here, S&P 500 peaked to trough here, almost 58% in the financial crisis bear market. Back here in the 73-74 bear market, almost a 50% drop from point A here to point B here. And if we go back even further and use returns on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, if a drop like 89.19% doesn't get your attention, I'm not sure what will. So our base case as of December 30th is still that secular trend in here but it's important that we respect valuations are high and the future is always uncertain and thus we'll take it day by day. And in terms of respecting risk, sometimes it can be helpful to take numbers like this or 50% to 90% type declines and translate them into dollars. And when things are going very, very well as they are today, it can also be easy to write these off as extremely rare instances in market history. Walking forward from the COVID low in 2020, we've spent a lot of time in these videos talking about keeping an open mind about better than expected outcomes. To maintain that incredibly important maximum flexibility, it's also important for us to understand how bad things can get from a historical perspective. So let's assume hypothetically, on December 29th, 2021, we had a million dollars invested in the stock market. If the stock market experienced a similar decline after the peak in 1916, our million dollar portfolio hypothetically would be worth just under 600,000. This is the 1916 case. The peak to trough loss in the stock market in 1901 was 46.14%, hypothetically taking that million dollars down to 538,000. The Dow saw a similar decline in 1919, losing 46.58%. 1 million in that case hypothetically becomes 534,000. The 1909 case, 528,000. 1906 case, 514,000. And the point of the exercise here, large declines may not be as rare as we think. In the 1973-74 bear market, the S&P 500 lost just under 50% peak to trough. 
And thus the math works out well. A million dollars becomes roughly 500,000 hypothetically. And if you've been investing in the markets for years, you know that during the dot-com bear market, the S&P 500 experienced a similar decline from 2000 to 2002, the decline was 50.51%. Now taking us our million dollar portfolio up here, hypothetically on December 29th, 2021, down below 500,000. Many of us also remember the 2007 to 2009 bear market, S&P 500 peaked to trough, lost 57.69%, taking us down hypothetically to about 423,000. And in terms of human nature, the problem is as we walk forward in these cases, it gets very, very difficult to remain a buy and hold investor. The point of the exercise here is not to knock buy and hold. It's obvious if we look in the rear view mirror, if you had held walking forward from 2007, you've done quite well. That's easier said than done when your million dollars is worth 423000 in March of 2009. And it's one thing to take a 58% drawdown when you're in your 20s or 30s. It's quite a bit different if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s. And historically, it can get worse. 1937, we almost hit 60%. Math is very easy. Again, your million-dollar portfolio will be worth about 400000 at the bottom. And if we step forward to the granddaddy of them all, between 1929 and 1932, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 89.19%. Thus, hypothetically, your million dollar portfolio on December 29th, 2021 could be worth something on the order of 100,000 down here at the low. And in these hypothetical examples, we're trying to show the magnitude of the declines and the duration potentially of the declines. If we come over here, the 89.19% is the largest percentage decline in the examples that we've shown. That comes from 1929. And from the 10 examples that we've just walked through, the longest duration bear market was when the market peaked in 1937. It didn't bottom for 1,875 calendar days. So in terms of the examples that we've just covered, maximum pain in terms of a percentage loss, 89.19%. And hypothetically, if we experience something similar to the market's performance walking forward from 1937, the market might not bottom if we peaked on December 29th, 2021 until February 16th of 2027. Obviously, these are extreme examples, but human nature being what it is, if it's happened before in stock market history, we should at least be prepared and respect that it could happen again. So none of this is meant to predict anything. This is not a forecast of what 2022 will look like. In fact, you may remember we went through a similar exercise early in calendar year 2021. These are some of the drawdowns that we covered back in September. This was the look of the S&P 500 in 2021 on September 30th. These are the moving averages here, the 50 day in blue, the 250 on the bottom here. If we walk forward intraday on December 30th, you can see we don't have a lot of deterioration here. We really don't have anything to be too concerned about based on the chart in front of us. Well, history tells us that things can change very, very quickly. And thus, there's nothing wrong with always having a healthy respect for market history and market risk. If we take this same chart here, and add price, so the center of your screen is December 30th at 3.11 p.m. Eastern Time. This was during the session. At the close on December 30th, the S&P 500 was up roughly 53 points between Monday and Thursday. And we all know that we'll have a much higher probability of recognizing that shift from volatility to ignore to volatility to respect. If we head into next week, and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation 
or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivaco Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.